Uh, my name is Jesus Florido. I'm a violinist. Uh, plays just about every possible style. <laughs> uh, just because of uh, wanting to work, you know, and to make a living as a violinist, you have to learn to cover a variety of styles and electric violin, acoustic, classical, you know, you name it. And I've been a student of that for many years. That's actually one of my most common questions that people ask me. And because of what I do, and I, especially talking to students in schools, you know, I try to be inspirational in a way, you know, and um, everybody is waiting for this emotional story when they say, what do you play the violin? And I, well, my mom made me, you know, at the beginning. <laughs> uh, my story is actually like most kids, you know, my mom said, she picked an instrument for me, you have to play something, and I wanted to play the cello. And there were no little cellos, I was six years old. And I said, well, you don't have little cellos, we have this little violin. I said, okay. And, um, Reluctantly, I went to my lessons and I didn't like it and it was really hard and I couldn't make sound and typical. And then uh, the orchestra started a year later and I sat in the back of the orchestra. You know, and I wanted to be a front like any kid, you know. So my mom said, well, you have to practice. And I'm very competitive. So I started practicing. And then what happened is that what happens when you practice, you get better. You start to sound good. And once I started to sound good and I could play things, that's when I, I fell in love. And then I played a recital, like a little student recital. And I remember, I was seven and a half maybe. I was not even eight. And I played my little twinkle, twinkle something, you know. And uh, people clap. And I, oh, they liked it. <laughs> and that's when I fell in love. And the learning curve on string instruments, on bow strings instruments, is really steep. Mm -hmm. Like in the piano, you can see, sit on the chair and just play a note and it will sound. Or, or, or a flute, I mean, you might have a little problem, but once you blow it, it's, it sounds, the sound is there. And the violin is just a squeak, if you're lucky, you know. And then you're, there's so many things that can go wrong, your hand the angle. So I've always been... Since I was a little, I, was, I became a student of the mechanics of playing. And uh, that's why I enjoy teaching so much, because it's, I, I like to try to help kids not to have to go through what I went through. <laughs> anyway, like a good parent, I want to make their lives a little better than my own. My first song Oh, Ode to Joy. Ode to Joy? <laughs> well, I started, again, in the conservatory training, very disciplined, very strict, very, this is what you do, this is Bach, this is Mozart, this is... But my dad, I blame all this on him. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was an amazing person and an amazing musician. He loved music of all kinds. And one day he took me to a record store and he basically, I remember it was early in the morning so that there was nobody there. It was just the two of us. And he just, go, find something. And I had no idea. So I asked the guy if he had any violin and he said, oh, in that pile over there, there's some of that. And it was a jazz section. So I'm looking uh, through the through the records, you know, as so you go like this, you know, and you're looking at the records. And I found this guy with a purple violin. And on a stage, it looked like a rock concert, you know, it's like a live picture, you know, all this lights colored and a purple violin. And I mean, my brain just, it's like, what is this? He doesn't have a tux. There's not a cheesy picture of some, <laughs> uh, uh, um, you know, lake or something. <laughs> You know, it's like a rock concert, and it was Jean-Luc Ponty, you know, and then I bought the record right there, and once I listened to it, and I went, my brain like triple exploded. And I was maybe 12 or 13, and it was never the same after that. Uh, 
Um, I have to say first my teachers, the good ones and the bad ones. <laughs> I, I always say I give credit to the bad teachers too because they taught me what not to do. <laughs> but no, I have, I had, you know, three main teachers that were mentors, you know, father figures to me. And um, to this day, they're my inspiration because in a way I want to be, I don't want to let them down, <laughs> but also I want to show them that all their efforts was worthwhile. You know, I turned out okay. <laughs> uh, and there are my musical influences, you know, which begins with the classical composers, obviously. Bach, I tell people this, you know, to us it's like God, you know, it's like the rule he made, all the rules he made, every, you know, harmonic rule that we know started with him. And obviously Beethoven to me, who's the real composer, you know, he, he was not Mozart. I mean, I love Mozart, don't take me wrong, but Beethoven was a worker. He will erase and write again. Mozart, just everything, just came out. He was that kind of genius. Beethoven was not a genius. People call him a genius, but he wasn't. He was a scientist. He was a chemist. He was mixing things. He was erasing. I mean, there's 10 different versions of, at least that I know of, of the Beethoven fifth. There are, there are the, the violinist. You know, the first time that I heard the Beethoven, speaking of Beethoven, the first time I heard the Beethoven violin concerto was Christian Ferrat, a French violinist that to me is my God, <laughs> my violin God. You know, he, he um, when he played the opening of that, I just thought, I mean, it cannot get any better than this. I mean, the, the sound, the, the whole thing. And I remember going to my teacher and telling him, I want to play this piece. And I go like, uh, okay, you're going to have to work really hard then because uh, it's not an easy piece. And, uh, and I worked really hard and I played it. <laughs> so, but, um, and then there are people that I play with, friends, colleagues, you know, kids that were under my, on the same level with me, and I had a, my best friend, I mean, he practiced so much, I felt like a slacker, you know, so I always say, he inspired me to practice and to get better, and, uh, and he always says, no, you're better than me, you should, he encouraged me, the, what's the wonderful thing about him, is like, he encouraged me to practice, so, and to get better, and to th thrive for excellence, he says, don't, don't play ugly, and my teacher used to say, my first violin teacher I was like, always play beautiful, always, no matter what, even if you're tuning. When you grab an instrument for the first time, um, I, I have to assume that you love music, <laughs> you know, even if your mom is forcing you like me. I mean, I, I was being forced to play, but I love music. That was never the problem. So remind yourself that you will get better. You know, and I try to keep that perspective with beginner students. When I work with, with beginner students, it's like, keep this in perspective because I'm showing you what's on the other side of that mountain. <laughs> you know, I'm speaking for the mountain. I always tell people I'm a preacher that preaches music. Uh, because it's very important for beginners to keep that in mind. That is, it's not an easy road, but it will get better. Listen to your teacher, do your work, and it will get better. And I think that, and keep an eye that on music. So remember, oh, I want to play like that. Find inspiration. Find inspiration. Find, uh, if you're playing violin, well, I always ask every student when I go to master classes in different places, my first question is, who's your favorite violinist? And these days, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know. So, well, find it. You know, type you know, a violinist on Google, see what comes up, or on YouTube, or, you know, especially nowadays. I didn't have that, I'm that old. <laughs> Bach. That no is question. the fastest anyone has ever answered that question. That is no question in my mind. Huh. I can die with that, and I'll be perfectly happy. And I will say, if I had the second choice, then Beethoven, because to me, Beethoven is it's a rock and roller of all of them. I mean, to me, Beethoven actually is the father of jazz, and I can go very deep in detail to explain to you how he used just harmonies and progressions and swing and things on his music. Um, but that's a whole different chapter. <laughs>